Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, this is a late night LA episode. Hey, we're rolling, we're rolling deep, deep into the night. This is our Riders on the Storm episode. Where Riders shit gets on weird. the Storm, I like that. Yeah, song. shit gets hey. weird. If we're gonna go weird, then we got the best person for that. Who do we got? Oh, this is Mr. Ryan Sickler. Whoa! Thank you, guys. Uh, this is uh, about. The, <laughs> thank you I'm for sorry, having me I'm as sorry. your Riders is, on the Storm episode. This is this is one of this is part of my my Maryland crew. Yeah, this is part of the Baltimore crew. Yeah. yeah. I know you guys wouldn't know anything about that because you haven't been, uh, you know, made honorary Baltimore people. Oh, you're not in that club. No, I don't, know, I don't even know what that means. I've, I've seen, seen the, the Wire. wire. <laughs> Boom, bitch! That's the only thing I know about Baltimore. Yeah, that's, all that's I know what about most Baltimore. people say. Yeah, listen, but The I've, Wire is one of the best drama series I've of all time. I've survived Annapolis, on. Maryland, more than a dozen times. Yeah, but when people say that, they usually mean they went to like the academy or something. Not they went to Travis Pastrana's house and almost died a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you're a dumb drunk asshole, right? I feel like everybody from Baltimore has the same story of like I got out of there. No one's like, oh man, I live there. I, no, I just you got go out back, of there. You go back. You out here. If you ask someone where they're from, nine times out of ten, it is somewhere else. But you say that to somebody in Baltimore, and they just look at you, and they're like, here. I'm from fucking here. And you're like, oh, yeah, you don't leave. So, what, so you left because <laughs> so of the comedy. Right? I did. But can I tell you an Annapolis story? <gasps> yeah. Well, well, fire away. I, I love we're I don't getting know right into it right it's here. It's the God writers on the storm Look, I want to respect your format. Maybe you have sponsors, at the, however you do your thing. But if I can, you know, well, let me know. Well, the show. They're yeah. pre-recorded. Yeah. You're yeah. good. Yeah. Y'all got post-production. So... Um, one of the many jobs I had in college, I, uh, I would, I took a job <laughs> delivering newspapers. I delivered the New York times, um, from, I'd pick up in Baltimore city at two in the morning and then I would deliver some of Baltimore and I would make my way to Annapolis. Annapolis is where I would end. And it was beautiful. The sun was always coming up on the water. The, what do they call it? Annapolis and Davidsonville is beautiful. It's in gorgeous. The morning. Yeah. The, no, the overall. steam, you know, fall coming yeah, off yeah. and the rowing teams are out there. I've, I've got a friend there and she sends me, like, she posts I mean, pictures like, on Instagram all the time. Davidsonville the alone she has runs, an ordinance there, yeah. that says you cannot have a house there unless you have 10 acres. So like there's no without there's, old bay in the cupboard. Yeah, there's no there's no development. Really? Old bay. Everybody has you know old bay? large no. plots and property and horses and everything like that. Like it's gorgeous. And they've kept this for God, how long? Is that yeah. a county or a city ordinance? Or I think it's shit? a city ordinance for you Davidsonville. So you can't build a new property unless you own unless the ten you acres have ten acres. On. Yes. So I don't know, that, I didn't know that either. I don't know. I know they found Kevin Spacey there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hit Ilya and Gonzalez there too, if you yeah. remember back then. Oh, yeah. Hit him, wow. hit him out the Wye where, where River. Where, where, let's crab. do a where is he now on Ellie and Gonzalez. Where's How that about guy? that? Where's uh, VH1 on this? I, I, I think he's. It, where is VH1, period? You're really <laughs> dropping exactly. the ball, VH1. Can we please find out where the fuck Ellie and Gonzalez is? Jesus Christ. Where I'd are like they now? VH1. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that VH1. would be funny. <laughs> Behind the music, VH1. <laughs> Oh my God! We should produce this. You should do that for sure. I feel like they're only doing like rap singers, like wives or girlfriends. Oh I gotta be honest. Like I'm not. I, got I, I, I don't know if VH1 still exists. Does it? I don't know. It does. It does, does it? in some form? In Are some we form. sure? Yeah. I, I don't we, know. Can we phone a friend? Is there a friend somewhere that can find out if friends. VH1 is still a thing? <laughs> I don't have. We any have friends. what we have is uh, Canadian Nicole Arbor right off set here. Look it up on the internet. Who is finding for us. out right now if VH1 is still a thing? Maybe they got a website. Maybe they got a MySpace, but it got deleted yesterday. Yeah, we, I'm putting <laughs> money on. There's still a thing. Yeah. Did, did MySpace get deleted or something? They lost all their data up to what 2017. Oh yes. shit! Yeah. So, so every, if you had a MySpace account, it's been wiped yes is it, it a thing what happened vh1 is still a thing we got we got confirmation it is still a thing so it's no still original running, programming but no, uh, it's on the extended package on c- cable dish well i don't know what the fuck does it's tv pl- do? i think channel. it comes with it comes with telemundo and the oh, trinity shit. broadcasting yeah, 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 network yeah. both yeah. of those shows it's yeah. like vh1 ocho yeah yeah <laughs> Oof. <laughs> it will no longer be around how soon. <laughs> Ellie, how did we get to Ellie and Gonzalez? Oh, he's from Baltimore. Oh, yeah, you so got caught in Baltimore. Yeah. Maryland. I'm delivering newspapers to, and, and I'm going from the Baltimore City to Annapolis delivering the New York Times. 
And um, there's this one spot, there's this one house that gets it. And when you pull up, it's still dark because you're not in Annapolis yet. And, you know, I had to get good at hooking them and shit for a while. I got fucking good at it. But you would what you, look, I'm sorry, what do you mean by hooking? You gotta take that paper and you hook man, it over. You never throwing papers? I, no, yeah. dude. Oh man, oh, you're, oh, you're in the dude, car. Dude, it's the most miserable Skyhook. job car is you've ever had in your life. Yeah, because Skyhook. you gotta pick this shit up That's at right. two in the morning, and then you spend three and a half hours rolling the motherfuckers. I'm sorry, I've known you for twelve years, and you've never once mentioned having a job <laughs> delivering fucking newspapers. Have I, you ever I, heard you're him you're talk absolutely about that? right though. It wasn't until he said it that I remember I did See have what I do, I spark nostalgia. That's so Yeah, but the rolling sucks the most. Most the because first night you get in the car, that ink makes you sick. Wait, the papers aren't rolled. Well, first off, I didn't have a car; I had a bike. <laughs> all right, no, the papers aren't rolled. You have to put no, it in the so, all yeah, right, you so pick them up I'll in a bundle, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you go into this warehouse. This is how we did it. I don't, I I, I've this, only done this way. once, so it's how we did it. There's a black dude named James. He was in charge, and you did rolled you in. A, Jimmy, do you have a was, nickname? Nope, just James. Just James, I like that. James. And when it rained, Strong. he always had the same saying, double bag your papers. That's what he always say, double bag your papers. So double okay. bag, James. Now, so let's yeah. let's remember, too, if you're in Baltimore or in Maryland and you're getting a New York Times, you probably have a little bit more money than a lot of people to right. have a subscription yeah, to New yeah. York Times, some out-of-state paper. Um, that's why a lot of those people lived around Annapolis. They do well. well that down, makes it even more time consuming because Academy. now you're looking at a fucking address list. Yeah, ah, fuck. It's not just the whole neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Then you get easy. used to it. Was it. everybody like at first you're doing it and the sun's about about that you know that third week you're like ah, you know going whipping through cul de sacs like ah, just nailing it right. But there was this one, and so you go into the warehouse, you get the paper, you bag it yourself, you roll it, you bag it. You got to bag as many as you need. Bags you... were easier though because you didn't have to do a rubber band if you That's got right. bags. If That's it was right. raining, that was a faster. Right. That was a faster. Now fucking... I actually believe he did this. See? Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah, that yeah. was a level of detail that he would know unless he actually did it. Because he says a lot of fucked up, crazy shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> I believe he did it. Oh yeah, yeah. I believe like, he did like, it. You have to. You well, first off, you have to lease the fucking. The, the thing that holds the, the papers if you're going to deliver on a bike. So you're leasing it. Like, you have to pay for the fucking the sack that you have the back and the front full of papers. How long did you do this? I did this for, like, two, uh, probably a year. Probably and a how year. How old were you at the time? I was 20, 20, probably And 20. how baked were you when you were doing I this? wasn't. <laughs> I didn't start smoking marijuana until 21. Which really? We, yeah, we can come back to oh, But I caught. don't worry, I caught up. <laughs> <laughs> I, like but, that. Uh, I like that so you bag all these papers the first night you're putting all these papers in the car and that ink gives you it just gives you you're not used to smelling you're, all that it's so fresh hands, it's yeah. fresh your hands yeah. that's right i mean they stains. print newspapers at like midnight Man. to one right yeah so you're you getting fresh new yeah. I, you know and you always bring like I, they would say bring five extra i bring 10 because i wasn't accurate at first but also i take one i read it on the ride so I'm hitting all the houses, but this one house I keep mentioning. So it's a, if you like look down this way, it's just a narrow, it's a narrow walkway and the front door is almost motel-ish and the front doors are all facing this way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So as you walk down this corridor, front doors are right here to your right. Okay. Four or five of them. And homeboy that's got the last one all the way in is the guy that gets the paper. Of course. So I see that shit, and I'm like, I'm not fucking walking back there, you know? So I hook it to just the front of the walkway. Well, he calls and complains that it's not on his doorstep. Oh, you get, the, you get those calls. So. All the fucking And they time. did it first, you know, because I had to get at, I had to build up my accuracy, my accuracy. So. Say that word one more time. Accuracy. Yeah, like that, yeah. So. I, and I'm, by the way, I'm the, in a 1990. The greatest, the greatest <laughs> people were the ones that had the fucking, they, they actually bought the fucking plastic uh, thing yeah, the on mailbox. their mailbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It says the New York Times. Yeah. yeah. Slide yeah, that bitch. shit in. <laughs> yeah. Those are the classy guys. <laughs> yep. Those Thank are the classy guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I got to tell you, if I, like, I'm, I'm such a huge troll. You know I make all these fake Craigslist ads and use my burner accounts. Yeah, to yeah. The, yeah. I would have I spent my own money making little cards and I would have tucked them into the bag or under the thing. And like, if you have any problems, contact this number. I would have answered every one of those calls. <laughs> as, as, the com- as the complaint department. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the complaint department. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way he gets off. I can- uh, yeah, yeah. He makes a New Craigslist York Times ad. QC. He makes a Craigslist ad for a fucking dog. And a girl, you know, a lady is like, hey, you still got that dog? He goes, no, don't got the dog, but I'll get you a human. You're not a cop. You're, 
That's that, his delivery was very time. bad, but he does it yeah, all the time. So what happened? <laughs> so that guy's complaining, and uh, now the thing was, my cousin had started working there before me, and his route was so long, he talked them into splitting the route and giving me the second half. So now it becomes two routes instead of one long one. I pick up where he felt like he could get, and now that's where I begin my A to Z. To Z. So. James is like, hey, man, you got to get that up on the guy's fucking front door. I'm like, dude, I'm not going back there. It's a dark, long-ass walkway. There's no fucking lights, and I'm not putting it on that dude's door. I'm going to keep throwing it. And he's like, let me go with you. I said, okay. And we pull up, and he's like, fuck that. Threw it right on the And so when that guy called, he's like, we're not doing it. So like a week later, um, and I'm in a 1990 Honda Civic with original rims. That's what I'm driving. Yeah. And my buddy and I are getting ready to go to the King's hatchback? Dominion. It was, yep, hatchback. There you go, the EG. EF, 1990. No, it wasn't even a letter on it. It was the base, the no, B, no, the base. No, no, that's basic. the body model. It's the square it's the square yes. hatch. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No one knows what no. it's talking about. E- what? EF, EG, EK, you don't know the fucking Come Civics? On, Not a prayer. Come on, Not man. Who's seen fucking Fast and Furious? Yeah, it came out in like the fucking night. I want to know what happened. We can't let the man tell his story. So that's I want right. to know I'm, about I'm right here. Tell me about the <laughs> shoes you were wearing. So I will. <laughs> I, had, I probably had uh, Adidas shell toes on. Was it a manual? On, I'm, or I'm guaranteed. It was a four speed. There you go. Um, so this one particular morning, a buddy of mine and I were going to Kings Dominion, which is like Six Flags amusement park. So we're gonna finish up at sun up. We're gonna roll down to Virginia. We'll be right there when the park opens. I blow a fucking tire. So I pull over, I get out, I change the tire, but I call my cousin and I say, hey, I'm not going to make that second half of the route. Since you know the route, you mind just creeping over a little bit into some of the early homes and then I'll pick up on the back end when I get the baloney skin on the car. And he's like, no problem. So I don't know where he is. baloney skin... That's uh, my spare tire. Is that a colloquialism from Baltimore? Because I've never we've, heard That's that. what we've always called <laughs> yeah. it. Spare tire baloney skin? Baloney skin. That's just a little real thin ass. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, I guess if sure. you're constantly yeah. using spare tires. My, my, my spare tire had a fucking patch in it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but you got four baloney skins on your car. <laughs> oh, my God. If we can make baloney skin a household phrase. <laughs> this, probably probably this, just did. This whole episode would have been worth it. Just yeah, 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 yeah. I'm dying to know what happens, by the way. So this story is gonna go on forever. <laughs> I um I I don't know where my cousin is or anything. This is ninety two, so I don't have a cell phone. I hit him on a pay phone, I get a hold of him, whatever. To get a pager, maybe. So sun's coming up. I'm pulling up to this place and it the sun's just coming up. And I said, you know what? I, I can kind of see back there. I'm not I'm not that scared. I'll go fucking put this thing on the dude's door for one, for once. And I jokingly say to my buddy Jeff, I'm like, hey, if I don't come back in a couple minutes, fucking come get my ass. So I start to walk down this long corridor and I go deep. And you know, like when you're past that certain point where you like look back, you're like, oh, it's about equal distance here from this yeah. fucking dark corner and back here. I'm beyond that. And just as I go to put the paper down, this motherfucker in a black hoodie hood up comes, f- I mean, full speed around the corner and he's coming right at me. And I'm in this corridor, and it's dark in that corner. And I don't. This is in Annapolis. This is in. This is out, This is just outside of Annapolis. And I don't know what to do. And I said, "Fuck it. If I'm going out, we're going out." And I started charging this motherfucker. And I was ready to cry. My cousin goes, "Stop!" He pulled his hood off. I'm like, "Oh my god, dude, what are you doing?" He's like, "I knew you were so fucking scared. I've been hiding back here to fucking come and get you." He goes, "But you charged me." I was like, "Yeah, I wasn't fucking. I, I, I knew I wasn't making it out with the run and start. You'd be stabbing me or shooting me in my back. So I figured, fuck it. If I'm going out, we're gonna go out like men, and I'm coming at you." And that guy got his paper on his front motherfucking oh, Porsche. That, that, uh, just that, okay. just that one time though, right? Just that that one time. Because after that, because I was on time every time. Yeah. You gotta be too scarred <laughs> after that to go I back like down that hallway. That this, that, uh, from Baltimore, you know, if you're running away from somebody, you're getting stabbed or shot in the back. That's that's what I'm thinking. There's two options in Baltimore. That's what that's I'm thinking. It. Yeah, they teach you that in uh, elementary he school. Had, <laughs> he, had, he had wheels. He came around that corner. Like I was like, he's got a way too much of a running start. I'm never gonna fucking make it. 
That's hilarious. But I think I might be able to take everything this you had in your head about this dark corridor just came true. It did. That's what the, scared the, the fuck out of me. Like, up why? There, you got why? why? He knew it though. He knew how scared I was. <laughs> Do you to go tell down this there. story in stand up? I, I've told that on a podcast a couple times, I think, but on like mine. But I've never told that in stand up. How long you been doing stand up? Like nineteen years. Shit, that's a good career yeah. right there. Yeah. Happy about it or not happy about it? I love it. I mean, it's it's a one man, it's a solo sport. I should, let me take back one man because definitely not just men, but it's a solo sport which I like. Um, and there's just instant gratification, you know. When you're recording a podcast or even if you shoot a movie or whatever, you got to wait till that comes out. That's sometimes a year yeah. in post production if it's a film or whatever. But stand up is it's either instant gratification or it's instant like damn they didn't like that one, you know. So that's the drug, and you just there's nothing there's nothing like that feeling. There's nothing years. like that feeling. It's a long time. How did you get into it? Um, well, I got into comedy because uh, when I so when I was ten, um, my dad we had this early cable. So I'm I'm a little older. I'm 46. Uh, called Super TV. Okay, black it's, box shit. It was a black box about the size of the big DVRs today, honestly, and it had this little silver button on the top of it. And I think like after maybe 6 p.m. or something, you got an HBO. I think there was a Playboy channel. But back then it was shit like uh, strip uh, tic-tac-toe and shit like that. It wasn't fucking pissing in champagne glasses and stuff. You know, right, we, had, right, right, we right. hadn't hit the that. Good quite, stuff. Quite we hadn't the hit that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So <laughs> I feel like uh, different. the softcore porn is like everybody that, yeah. moving furniture from the waist down. It kind of exactly. seems like that. Yeah, exactly. Weird. Anyways. So... Um, my dad's watching. I, I sneak out of my bed one night, and I, I go downstairs, and I'm laying in the hallway, and he's in the living room with his back's to me. He's in a recliner watching TV, and it's it's on HBO. And um, I see kids on the screen. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm 10. And I'm like, well, it's kids on there. I'm a kid. I, I'm probably allowed to watch this anyway. Sure. So I'm watching. And then... I see Richard Pryor, and I start laughing so fucking hard. And the movie's Busting Loose. You ever see Busting oh, Loose? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad hears me laugh, and he goes, get in here. And I go in the living room, and he goes, sit down. And I sit next to him, and he goes, finish watching this with me. And that was it. That was the moment I fell in love with how Richard many, Pryor. How many people comedy. see Richard Pryor? Everybody. Like, Jesus Christ. We, wow. we interview a lot of comedians, and like 80% of them say Richard it, Pryor. He, yeah. That's it. It depends on your generation, though, I think. Like, there's obviously so many fucking good comedians. We can go on and on and on. But for me, yeah, you know, my life was not like his life, but it was a very difficult way to come up. And just for him to turn that, all of those stories into like laugh out loud moments is just it's it's beautiful. And he's the he's the fucking best at it. Sure. Yeah. For me personally, like I was an 80s kid. So like Eddie Murphy. Yeah. That was our dude where it was just like red leather. Outfit. I was going to ask you, did you ever get that red leather jacket? No. <laughs> Fuck no. I'm going to get you Cause, one. Because only Eddie could pull that off. Guy's sure. done three stand up specials. That's it. That's yeah. it. And, and he's it, considered you know one of the greatest. I mean, he a, is. A million times yeah, over. He keeps saying he's do, going to, but. But he's not. It'll be the biggest stand up special of all time. He, but he won't do it. And I don't think he should. And I'll tell you why. I think at that level, when you're that great, it's like Jordan, game six. When you leave on a game winning shot and, and everybody just remembers you for being the best at it. Because, like, truthfully, that's my, my only memory of Eddie was, was being the best. If he came back and did a shitty set, I'd be like, oh, fuck, man. I don't think, I don't think he, could, he could go into the realms that Chappelle does now, and I think that would hurt him. I, I like, do, too. Like, but also, I, it's Eddie Murphy. So if you're smart and it's a business and you want to do this right, you hire the appropriate writers. And you, if you you're do. if you're going to if you want to get into those waters, then you need and that's not your thing, and you haven't done this shit in a long time, then you hire the right. But people. I just don't know. Even if he did, even if he did walk it that way, I don't know if the audience would follow him. Yeah. you know I, what I mean. Like everybody knows Chappelle. Chappelle was a shock factor when he first started. When he first started Chappelle Show and everything, it was like the oh, very fuck, first. Like, literally, sketch. if he started making those sketches now, people would be fucking losing their oh, goddamn yeah, yeah. minds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the very yeah. first sketch on the very first episode of Chappelle Show was Clayton Bigsby, the yeah. black white supremacist, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. black blind like, he white came supremacist. Out of yeah. the he was blind. Wait, <laughs> like, yeah, did we forget? Did we forget that? Like, like I just blind. don't think Eddie can go that way. The audience wouldn't. They can't see him like that. No, you know what I mean. And I, I think I think he could he could have won an Oscar, and I think he deserved it for Dreamgirls. Wow, and he walked out 
I don't know if you know this, but when he lost, he walked out of the Oscars. Oh, I didn't know that. And he walked out. And uh, right now he's doing um, a special, a biopic for Netflix right now. That's a hardcore drama. And he's trying to go for another Oscar right now. So we'll see what happens. I think, him? I think he should have got it for Nutty Professor. Oh, absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah. The, the fact that you are, you perform- what, character. six or seven <laughs> So one of my favorite things to do, this is for your audience, I like to sit home when I don't have my daughter and smoke a joint, and I'll put Nutty Professor on, and I would just pick one character at the table, and I will ignore everything else that's said because there are so many gems laid in under everybody over-talking and everything that if you just dial and you just rewind that scene and then listen to the uncle because he's the, he's the father, the mother, the uncle, the grandma, Sherman, yep. Denny's buddy love, yeah. And I feel like there might even be one more in there. <laughs> that yeah. he's been hiding the it's whole time. It's so fucking good. Like, and they're doing a Coming to America, too. That's getting ready yeah, to yeah, come yeah, out. Yeah, uh, they're so. shooting. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if they're finished yet. Yeah, but, but still, at that coming. time, had anybody, no one had ever played multi-characters like that. No. And not, so that, that was and the next thing. To take yeah. it to the next yeah. level. No one's ever done that since. Well, so one night, I'm in seventh grade. It's Christmas. And my father calls me out of bed again. It's like, come here, I want you to see something. It's midnight. And I go out, and I'm like, what is this? And it's Eddie Murphy, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Tim, uh, what was it, Kazarinski would come in. As For the, SNL. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Stuff, yeah. And I'm just like, dude, my dad showed me. I was, like, it was then, that was immediately, like, I loved Eddie Murphy. And then the James Brown, um, Too Hot in the Hot Tub, and the... Uh, a little Richard, Sim- little Richard Simmons is still. It's that so fucking really good. No, it's it's great. so good. Yeah. They're all so fucking good. Uh, and he was like 18. You know what I mean? Like the youngest dude person on SNL in history. Yeah. 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 So uh, that got me into Eddie. And then that's what started my love of comedy. And then it was my dad would introduce Rodney Dangerfield, George Carlin. I actually got to see George Carlin live in Baltimore oh, at uh, shit, Pier really? 6. And the best part, not shouldn't say the best part, the most interesting part at the end was when he's running through the set, what is it, seven dirty words? Seven uh, words you can never yeah. see on television, yeah. Yeah. This, it's, it's Baltimore. It's humid as fuck. It's the middle of the summer. It's like 115. There's a guy up in the scaffold. He's got the, you know, spotlight. And you just hear this, boom, and the light is on the ceiling, and this dude's legs are sticking out, and he passed out. So they tell Carlin, like, you got to fucking hustle it up. Uh, Because they have to bring the fire department out. So he runs through all the classics at lightning speed. And everyone's loving it, laughing. They bring the fire department in. They put this, I've never even seen it before. They put him in like a, it's a, it's a, a stretcher, but it's a cage. Looks like a coffin, if you can think of that. And then it's a two part, two piece cage that closes together. And they just lower this dead, feeling dude down to the bottom and then Carlin walks it kind of sounds like the <laughs> the airline. Carlin was a beast man I can't I'm trying to think of the seven words shit piss and then cocksucker, cocksucker and motherfucker, motherfucker cunt. Cunt. that's cunt. how it ends and tits is one of them I saw, I got I got to see him once What's towards the seven? end yeah and did you really yeah, yeah. It, was, it was one of those it, it was like seeing the dead or like the stones yeah. in concert where you're just like dude I've got Legend. to do this it once. doesn't matter what happens at the yeah, show. yeah exactly yeah. yeah exactly and for me personally I can't point out a specific joke i just remember carlin being on stage crushing it you know same just head down angry and he was fucking hilarious even that last special we put out like i mean it it aired about what eight months before he died but he taped it probably six months before that so it was about a year and a half before he actually died but he was still killing it yeah 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 like he was he looked terrible but the fucking material was great yeah. Still, and it was and fresh. his range too. Like he was Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. On, yeah. Okay. And they said, forget about the language. You enunciate perfectly. He was. Uh, he's in. I watched Tarzan two with my daughter. Uh, he's, he's a. He's the baboon in Tarzan two. He's Bill and Ted. He's in. They're about to Jay have a part two. Box, Jay and Silent He's Bob. in all of it. But if if you're in comedy and you get a chance to put Carlin in something, you do it. You <laughs> yep. do it. Uh, today, in today's comedic world, who do you think is the best? Stand up wise, the best out there right now. The very best. If you had one to choose, I got Chappelle at one. I, I would say Chappelle, and I got Bill Burr at two. Yeah, I and, would it's, say that, and it's and it, it's it's a tough call for me. Like, I'd say Chappelle's number one. Here's the thing: like we were talking to uh, Jamie earlier, Jamie Kaler, mm-hmm. and I was asking him how long it takes you to develop that hour long set, and he's like, I, I, I don't know because I've never done stand up, and he's like, Yeah, that's like a lifetime. 
right? For some people, yeah. I mean, look, I, I did stand up for many years, and you know, a lot of people it's eighteen months. Some people it's shorter. Louis C.K. was probably the fastest that I saw doing them in a year, flipping them in a year. Correct. And then he would toss it. So he would do it in a year, do the special, toss it, and never go back to those jokes ever again. Um, but he was one of the only people that I knew that was doing that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and with with all the shit that he went through, I, look before that, you'd probably put him up as three, top three th that's out there. Uh, Patrice O'Neill, before he passed. Right. Oh, no doubt. Fuck. No doubt. That guy was no a beast, doubt. and a lot of people didn't know like, no. how great no he was. Idea. Um, man, there, I mean, there's, there's some, uh, there's some younger guys that are coming up that have potential, but you don't really know yet, you know, cause you don't really find yourself as a comedian. And so I, I feel like you're a little older and you have more life experiences oh, man. in your forties. Yeah. Yeah. You really do. If you're still grinding at it and doing it, like your whole life changes, it changes. And then hopefully you can, well, podcasting for me, I can only talk about me. That's what changed everything for me. Cause I became more of a storyteller just because the same thing you just said we'd all talk about this kind of thing it's like are you talking about that no and the next thing you know that dude's using that as his closer for the right. hour you know right. and it becomes a five minute then a ten minute um because you just you know start building and stacking you on it just start fine-tuning those stories mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing you know you don't you don't really realize it until you think about it like you guys you guys on your last show did almost 400 episodes mm -hmm. Probably an hour apiece. 400 fucking hours just talking and telling stories. Yeah, and they were longer than an hour, and it's just talking and telling stories. And eventually you run out of yours. You know, you definitely run out of yours. So yeah. then it's a shift to the guests have to bring their stories. Yeah. You so know? you feel like that whole process helped you with your stand-up? It no doubt helped me with my stand-up, yeah. And I, so, and then I was fortunate enough to get on shows like This Is Not Happening, Ari Shafir's yeah, yeah. show on comedy. So I told a story on there about a house party I went to in college where a dude did a lot of cocaine and got bit in the face by an alligator. That's in Baltimore. That's a lot. Well, that sounds, hey, like, hey, that's that's that sounds like a party that's right like, there. That's, that's in like, Florida hey. every night. Yeah, that sounds like a Florida story. Florida, yeah. man. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, How the fuck did an alligator get to Baltimore? He in the just place? had he had one of those what are they like Caymans? Oh, pet I, yeah, yeah, yeah. those baby alligators. Oh, uh, yeah. started making out with it and it fucking tore his face apart. Oh god. Um, and then I told one uh, that's coming out in June this year um, that I was supposed to be the ball boy for the nineteen one of the ball boys for the nineteen eighty four Baltimore Colts, and I was woken in the middle of the night by my dad telling me, hey. The fucking teams packing up in this snowstorm and leaving right now. We're going like, to Indianapolis, and they did. <laughs> that's <hilarious. laughs> that was supposed to be one of the ball boys. As a kid, that's got to be the worst. <laughs> I tell the whole story. It was devastating. That's hilarious. It comes that's out. A, in that's June. a real story. It's a real story. Oh, that sucks. Dude. So, <laughs> who, who else have you worked with today that that you say w w would you say is is great? Like you said, Tom Segura. Oh, Tom Segura, no doubt. I um, love Tom Segura. Yeah, yeah and like, Christina, Christina Pajitsky too. Um, I've worked with, gosh, who else do I think? I mean, are we talking about current today or yeah. just in general? Because I yeah. work with Tracy Morgan, so many people. Tracy Morgan's still so good. Everybody's got a Tracy Morgan story. Oh, What's yours? I got a good one. All right. Um, so I worked with him for a weekend in um, Irvine, and this was the older Irvine. And it's I'm opening for him. This is years ago. And he was just out here uh had moved uh, snl had wrapped and he was doing that first sitcom uh the family sitcom that lauren michaels was producing so he moved to la and we hit it off over the weekend he was super cool to me and i was a younger comic and i was used to doing a lot of shows that were on smaller stages so you get in this habit of standing still and he saw me doing that and he came over to me and he's like look i'm gonna i'm gonna pass some advice and this is what was awesome for me that Martin Lawrence gave me and that Eddie Murphy gave him. And that is those people over there paid for a ticket. Those people over there paid for a ticket. You walk. Take your time. At least you're moving. There's something going on. And go talk to these people over here for a little bit. Don't just talk to these people because these people want to show too. They want to see you. So that was the first person to get me to – and that also helps with storytelling. For me, at least, I enjoy the movement of just the pacing and walking around. I find myself doing that when I'm on the phone – with earbuds, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll stand up and walk around. Same, right? It's just more comfortable for me. So, um, it's the same with movies, by the way. Uh, yeah. With editing, it's uh, that that pacing of your cuts. Yeah. As a director, that helps move a story, and yeah, I, I learned that from a, my first editor that I worked with. It was like, hey man, you're static on this shot. We've got to see some motion and some movement. 
because life is moving. Life is constantly moving, so therefore you should be moving, and your audience should be moving with you. And I was like, all right, cool. And I'm, I'm sure that applies to, to stand-up, yeah. obviously, as well for you. So he gives me his number. He tells me to call him, right? Sort of a story we were talking about <laughs> off mic earlier. Same sort of thing. And I'm like, I'm yeah. not going to fuck with Tracy Morgan. Dude. I'm not going to bother him. He's, been so, he's just been so nice. And um, I decide a couple days go by, and I hit him up, and he's, hey, Ryan, man. I was like, oh, he's like, why don't you come out with me tonight? We're going to go to uh, the Sky Bar at the Mondrian. I'm like, all right, what time? Six o'clock. At the time, I have like a day job writing and producing promos, so I bounce out of there. I meet him at six o'clock. I think I'm going to meet him and a bunch of his buddies or whatever. But when I get there, it's, it's just you Tracy Morgan <laughs> and me. Okay, and I'm like, Oh, all right. Maybe they'll come there. It's still, it's six o'clock. It's daylight. It's summer. Maybe they're going to No, And we're drinking champagne and I don't drink champagne and we're drinking champagne and champagne and champagne. And Tracy's dumping it out for his dead dad and my dead dad. And he's buying bottles for that table and he's being Tracy Morgan. Right. And I'm like, holy shit, I haven't eaten anything since lunch. I did not expect this. I thought I'd politely roll in. I'd have a beer or two, and I'd leave Tracy Morgan and his friends the fuck alone, <laughs> and I'd get out of there. But I am fucking headlong into this night at 9 o'clock. I'm wasted, wasted. So we keep drinking, and we keep drinking. And he's just being super cool to everyone. People know him. They're coming up, and he's being very polite, uh, addressing everybody. I see my opportunity to duck, uh, duck into the bathroom, make myself throw up so I can, you know, keep going. Because I am at capacity, and I have no problem sticking my finger down my no throat and relieving myself. Yeah. So I'm standing up, and I don't even need to bend over. I just stick my finger down my throat, and that's just champagne. It's a champagne fountain coming out. And then I go back out, and Tracy's like, man, if you want to party with me, you got to eat something. I was like, I didn't think I'd be here fucking seven hours drinking champagne and not eating. So now it's after two. They let him stay a little bit because he's fucking Tracy Morgan. So we go outside, and there's these girls that have uh, talked to us, and they're, they're right across the street at the Hyatt next to the comedy store. So we walk them across the street, get them back. We come back, and Tracy's like, hey, man, do you have some cash for the <laughs> for the valet and i'm a i'm broke you know what i mean but how am i supposed to tell tracy morgan i can't pay 20 dollars for the valet after buying your champagne all, all night. fucking night yeah. long and being so awesome so i go get money i pay the 20 dollars for the valet and the valet if you ever saw punked it was that maroon jag that was badass that they acted like they were towing and he was pissed he got up in the rollback with the dude he's like if you take it i'm, I'm coming with you yeah <laughs> he loved this fucking car, right? So the valet pulls it in, and Tracy thinks that he pulls it in a little too fast for his taste, and he starts going off on the fucking guy. Tracy's sober at this point. I am not. He is going nuts on this guy. The guy's like, I didn't do anything. I don't know if he did or not because I'm too fucked up. But I get in the passenger seat, and he's like, I'm going to take you to your car. Where'd you park? I'm like, behind Pink Dot. We're talking about a block and a half away. I'm like, I can walk. He's like, I got you. He punches this fucking gas pedal, and he fishtails out on <laughs> Sunset Boulevard and then punches it, and I shoot back. He goes up there, boom, behind Pink Dye. He's like, you got any weed? I'm like, I got a little bit of weed. I give it to him. He kisses me on my cheek, and he drives off into the sunrise, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucked up, I sleep in my car for until I wake up and I sober up. Oh, and, yeah, we've done that a lot. And then I head home. Okay, now fast forward literally one year later, a friend of mine hits me up and he's like, hey, I'm coming out there. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but my sister is uh, Bismarck. He's like business manager or something. I'm like, how does that how have we known you all this time? And that just has never come up. Yeah. And he's like, well, Biz is DJing the Playboy Mansion party and then the after party at the Mondrian at the Sky Bar. Uh, that Jamie Foxx is throwing after the ESPYs. Do you want to go? I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to go. <laughs> so we all meet at the the Sky Bar, and we're getting on shuttles, and we're headed over to the Playboy Mansion on these shuttles. And I've already been to the Playboy Mansion once, which I, if you feel like hearing that, I can tell you about that later because that's kind of interesting. Yeah. But the bus is full of Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, uh, Antonio Tarver. This is when Smarty Jones uh, was in the horse, you know, the horse. Triple Crown, all yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah. So we get there, and there's fucking ESPN Friday Night Lights, a live fight on the property there, being you know broadcast everything. 
And I'm walking with my buddy, uh, Izumi, who is sister, and then my buddy, Shannon, who flew out for this because he was not missing this. And I did call my brother. I have two brothers. I have a younger brother and a twin brother, fraternal twin brother. And I call him, and I'm like, hey, and I leave it. <laughs> I guess I fucked up and left it on the house. The answer machine, his wife heard it. And all he did is call me back. He goes, call my fucking cell, he kept saying, because I'm just like, hey, you want to come out to the Playboy Mansion party? He's like, Jesus Christ. So the three of us go. We're walking the property, and Tracy Morgan comes around the corner. I have not seen him, no communication for a year. And he's like, Ryan Sickler. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And this is the thing. Tracy remembers everybody. He remembers everybody. He comes up to me. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, you know, Zoomy, this whole thing. He's like, you're rolling with Tracy Morgan tonight. So we roll the whole fucking party the rest of the that night. That seems dangerous. With Tracy Morgan, right? Yeah, that's amazing. And LeBron's there. This is, this is. Who wasn't there? It was like baseball players weren't. <laughs> I can't remember what season it was. I think it was like baseball. That the guys weren't there. Uh, but these guys are monsters. I mean, towering. Yeah, Every yeah, one yeah. of them yeah. towered. And the women that were there to try to meet the athletes were 10 times better looking than the, the chicks that were hired by the Playboy Mansion, if I might say so myself. So now we reconnect with Tracy. We're partying with him all night. We're having a blast. The next night, he's like, roll with me to the sky bar and we're like we don't need you we got business ticket he's djing up in the vip so we're gonna go up in the vip and we're up there with sam jackson we're up there with everybody tracy morgan is shirtless and he's rolling these fat ass blunts and he's trying to give them to all like the athletes like to and shit and like i can't fucking smoke yeah <laughs> he's like what are you talking about he's shirtless up there yeah. like you're gonna get me fucking kicked out of the goddamn nfl so he's like ryan get over here and then we just smoke those blunts the rest of the fucking <laughs> that's night. one of his no things way. though is taking his shirt off in public oh right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. his thing it's like yeah. a signature move uh burt kreischer as well mm -hmm. burt will take off his shirt in public always i have a rare picture of burt kreischer we were at the comedy store the other doing the same show and he has his shirt on i uh, snapped save it. it i, I can't wait rare i can't wait of him until we on. get Bert out here, and you get to tell him about the time you fought Devin Sawa because of Bert. Yeah, yeah, with Bert, <laughs> with Bert Kreischer. You uh, fought him with him yeah, or yeah, because no, of no, him? He, he fought him. So Bert told this story on his podcast. Uh, so it was Bert and I. He was one of the first people I met in Los Angeles, and uh, we go out. He's just out of college. I didn't know that he, like the the life rights of Van Wilder, yeah. was him. Yeah. So like he was in school for ten years. They you know they bought the life rights <laughs> yeah. off of him and all that. Most shit. people are doctors when they get done, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I had this assistant um, to my agent who was just like, "Yo, I had this friend, man. He's crazy as fuck. Exactly like you. Like you're both comedians. It'd be a blast. Like we'll hook up." And so it was Burt Kreischer, and he had just moved to town. I just moved to town. We went out, but we were still in like college mode. Are you a Florida guy too? No, originally no, uh, Georgia. Okay, but I went to ended up going to Ohio State. Still big party school, all that stuff. Um, but I'm still we're, both of us are still in college mode, where it's just like, hey, you go out, you drink, you fight, and that's it. We walk into this bar. He takes his shirt off as soon as we get in there, and I was like, whoa! But he was fucking hilarious, and that was just him. And then we end up getting a fight with De Devin Sawa. So he tells it on his show, and I <laughs> I promise I hit him up on Twitter afterwards, and I was like, hey man. I don't know if you remember this, but we were we were in this fight because of you. And I was like, when we get together, we'll tell the full story on the show. And I hit up Devin Sawa, too, who's uh, now cool. He started following me on Twitter and everything. And it was like, we should all get together and recreate this story and, and talk about it. Because uh, it was one of those wild we Hollywood could do a, stories. A drunk debrief. history. Oh, yeah. Drunk exactly. debrief and recreate yeah, it with yeah. everybody. With all of us. God, that would be but amazing. with the real characters. With yeah. the real people. Yeah, yeah it'd be, funny be great. Shit. But he... You know, he was one of those people where, and you might be able to test this, you might not. I thought Bert was fucking hilarious from day one and hasn't changed. Been the yeah. same dude ever since. I've known his wife for a long time, everything. Been the same dude ever since. He just needed an opportunity to show how brilliant he was. For whatever reason, and he worked his ass off. Um, guy was always doing stand-up every night, always doing shows on like History Channel and everything. Bert the Conqueror and everything. Yeah. For whatever reason, it just didn't pop. Trip flip. And then, flip trip dude, or whatever all of it. Was. And then yeah. he links up with Rogan somehow uh, through stand up, and then boom, the podcast world. Now he's fucking massive, massive. and it's just like tour bus. Oh, I mean, <laughs> is you have you seen his schedule? Oh yeah, it is fucking yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. The reason why I bring all of this up: Do you look at your career the same way? Of like, hey man, I'm a day away, or an interview away, or just one fucking great night away from 
that kind of explosion in my life. Yeah, I think everyone really is, but especially with today, the social media kind of thing. But honestly, lately, with, you know, in our world, Brody Stevens passing, like, it doesn't fucking matter. You know what I mean? Like, right now, my number one thing is being a dad to my daughter. And I don't give a fuck about anything else after that. So I'll work hard at it, and I'll keep grinding at it. But that's changed my whole perspective. So if it happens, whatever that fucking it is, great. I mean, I make money i don't have to borrow from anybody i don't have to call family and beg for anything i got a great roof over my head i got you food got in my stomach like and my daughter loves you. me and i have yeah. great fans man i have great i have i have intelligent funny great fans they're passionate they're loyal and uh i'd rather have i'd rather have ten thousand of them than a hundred thousand people just follow me because somebody else fucking follows me and they don't give a shit about your you know, get behind you at all. Sure. Yeah. What was your What was your uh, Playboy Mansion story? Oh, because so, it's gone now. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, half died. Uh, he sold the for the audience at home. Half died. Um, he yeah, sold. Well, we'll, he uh, sold the the mansion to his next door neighbor. No shit. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. He, yeah. That guy got it exactly. So, but what he said was, "Hey, you can have this, and then you know, I'll live here until I pass." Same with Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, his lawyer, owned that house. Bert was in some financial trouble. I don't know. I'm not sure what, what half was or not. But then after that, the property went to him. So they yeah, but a that's a very common thing in like Wyoming and Texas and shit like that. Remember when we had uh, uh, the two giraffe or giraffe rich? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> Where it yes. says like Correct. you get in Texas, like you get first look essentially if someone dies or or anything like that, like if you get that first opportunity to buy your Like neighbors. the first right of refusal? Yeah. yeah. Goes yeah, to yeah, your yeah, neighbor yeah. before yeah. family? Um, yeah. Well, it depends. It's up to the, the person and what you want to do with it. So I guess Hef had lived next door to this guy forever, and it was just like, hey, man, do you want to do this and keep it open? Um, what year did you go? So I moved here the second time in 97. So it was probably ninety summer of ninety seven. So before damn. cell phones, oh, all yeah. that shit. Damn. Like yeah. And um, That's a party. But see, it was see, it's a little different. It wasn't actually that. This is what's this is how it happened. So I'm in this dump apartment in North Hollywood when I first moved here. And I've got this these old glass windows that they're they're they lay flat, but they're just slats. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, but they're yeah, glass. Yeah. It's like all the win- windows in Oahu. Okay, great. Yes, that's <laughs> yes. right. So I have these fucking windows, and there's a lady that lives on the top floor by me who's got, I mean, fucking chinchillas and snakes, and she's always walking by bringing shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Get that fucking snake out of here! Like, I don't even know you. Your house smells like piss. You got nine cats in there. Like, what the fuck's going on? And she's a drunk. She's a drunk. Maybe she cleaned up. Hopefully you did. And uh, <laughs> she tells me, like, and her cats are coming in my apartment all the time. And she tells me, I go, what do, what do you do? What the fuck do you have all these animals? Are you, like, do you work at a vet? Are you a rescue? Like, what do you do? And she's like, I'm Hugh Hefner's number two zookeeper. And I just laugh her out of the fuck. I just laugh her out of my door. Like, get the fuck out of here. You're drunk. And she's like, no, I really am. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. So a couple days later, I go, you really Hugh Hefner's number two zookeeper? And she's like, "Mm mm-hmm. And I go, all right, I want you to prove it to me. And she's like, how? I go, I want an invite to the Playboy Mansion. She's like, done. Come tomorrow. Pull up to this side gate. Say your name. They'll let you in. And I'm just like this drunk asshole, you know. And I'm an idiot for even fucking believing this lady. But I drive over to the Playboy Mansion, and I pull up to the gate. They say, can we help you? And I say, yeah, I'm, I'm Ryan Sickler. I'm here to. I think her name was Debbie. I'm here to see Debbie. And damn it, those motherfucking gays didn't open the fuck up. And I was like, really? you got to be kidding. <laughs> so you got into the mansion. Not only did I get in the mansion. Zookeeper. On my Instagram, I've got a picture of that same 1990 Honda Civic in the fucking driveway of the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you're not allowed to do that. No. You don't do Even when I went back for the party, you shuttle over. Everyone shuttles. You yeah, don't yeah, pull yeah. your shit on. But I pulled it right on there. And damn if she wasn't. And she... I've got video of me feeding the fucking monkeys, and they've got peacocks and everything over there. He's got, like, iguanas and shit in this little, like, uh, like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, you know, like a little safari area. Not safari, but rainforest. Rainforest, okay. like, tight little spot. Yeah. Um, and then walked all through the house and, and everything, man. It was fucking great. That's so she, she really the weirdest was. way I've heard of She's someone getting <laughs> in the playground. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that wins. But then I got to go back for a legit party, too. So I was and How was that? 
That was fucking great. Fucking drugs. Oh, yeah. I didn't see much of that because they do that in the house upstairs. You're not allowed upstairs when there's parties like that. But titties and shit all in the grotto and all that. Yeah, running around late night. That happens for sure. Yeah, Yeah. of course. Yeah, now now that doesn't exist. I don't. I don't know if it can it's anymore. Done. It's no. done. It is. I None always wanted to go to that Midsummer Night's Dream. That was supposed to be the one, the, yeah. that party. That was like the one I always heard about. Everybody and their mother went to, to Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. The one Except time I got invited. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, well, I got invited you once. Went? It, well, no, I was shooting a movie. So I was out of, out of town, and it was one of those things where you, you think to yourself, oh, I'll just go next year. No big deal. I'll go next year. I'll go next year. And then he got sick. Those parties started to slowly end, and you're like, yeah, they oh, did. fuck, did I miss my opportunity? But at the time that I got invited, it was cell phones, shit like that, and I heard it had changed, you know? Because back in the day, you could rage without consequences and, you know, drugs and everything sure. else. And, uh, it was not like that, especially when ESPN's rolling around with cameras. Yeah. A lot of athletes are there. Exactly. You know, it was very, like I said, I think I just saw some titties at the end of the night, but that was it. Speaking of cell phones, um, Chappelle and those guys now make everybody lock yeah. their cell phones up. Is that a big thing for your shows? No, I mean I'm not at that level, you know. I, but do you I care? Pref- like if yeah, you're if you're material uh, oh, leaks, yeah. yeah. I care because if it's if I'm working on it and it's not ready yet, it makes you look like you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you know. You there's like there's a big difference between Jay Larson always say, uh he was in the band in high school and one time he told a girl, I'm in the band, she goes, You're in a band? He goes, No, I'm not in a band. I'm in the, the band. band. And there's a big difference between a uh and a the. So sometimes those little things like that make a big difference. So it's trial and error. You're out there all the time. Like there's a lot of people like, oh, I've heard you do that bit before. And and they they remember the meat of it or the the punchline, but they've never heard it set up like that and done that way where it hits better, you know. So um I prefer it. Yeah, no, I don't want anybody leaking that stuff because it's all, you know, for that. I, I hate to break it to him because if you go to like a big bands uh, act in this next city when they're in your city, you're gonna hear the same songs that you heard in that first. Yeah, song. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Family just comedy. It's yeah. just comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like, comedy they get on you for. I heard you do that already. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 ten sing- days ago. The, by the singer's way. also gonna say that that city is the best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The best they've ever heard. That's hilarious. So what do you what do you got coming out next? Your your podcast just ended. Yeah. So my new podcast is called The Honeydew, and I say I call it we're highlighting the low lights. So, you know, it could be a life story. It could, some people have come on and talked about growing up without a parent. Some people have come on and talked about abuse. Some people have come on and just done embarrassing moment after embarrassing moment. Anytime you've been thrown away or left behind felt like left out uh and then laughing at those fucking stories not boohooing about it like getting up and you know that's the thing with comics like you appreciate more and more that these are people that go through the same trauma everybody else does but there's something in us that will spin that for a fucking laugh and it's just so healing to joke about you know and is it just you on that podcast uh, yeah, it's my show. But then I have a guest each week, too. Okay. Yeah, and I'm at your mom's house, uh, Tom Segor and Christina Pajitsky's studio. Um, and you can just go to the you go to RyanSickler.com. That's where everything is. My, okay. my Twitter, my Instagram. I'm Ryan Sickler pretty much on everything. Cool. Uh, well, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week. Is that somebody that inspired you or helped you on the come up? Maybe gave you some advice that nobody else did. Who would be your one drinking bro of the week? Man, it would definitely be my dad. My dad died when I was 16, and I would love to have a fucking beer with my dad. My dad was the, not only the person that introduced me to comedy, the person that gave me fucking life. Uh, my dad was blue collar. He was a crew chief for Pan Am at National Airport. Well, now it's Ronald Reagan. Um, just a fucking great dude. Single dad, raising three kids on his own. Passed away uh, in his bed. We were home that night. Uh, found him in the morning. And yeah, I mean that guy was—he literally died for his kids and his family. So, uh, and he was in the Navy. He served in the military. So I wanted to say that too, by the way. That's awesome. Because uh, I know you all did. Fucking great. Um, I, did, I, I was the only one who did not. But oh, you all did not. These gentlemen did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. So, um, yeah, that would definitely be the guy I would love to sit and have a beer with. Cheers, cheers. Well, man, dude, Brian, thanks for being on the show, yes. man. Oh, great. thanks yeah. for You're having a me. Fucking dude. interesting, Amazing. dude, man. Thank you. <laughs> Is your is your because I've never seen you live? Is it the same laid back vibe yeah, when you're it's on stage? Yeah, storytelling and yeah, observational storytelling. That's yeah. fucking hilarious, man. 
Uh, funny dude. Funny dude. Dude, check out Ryan Sickler uh, for Jared Taylor. Ryan D'Anthony. You gotta get, we gotta get better, my man. I'm worried about yeah, you. you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. I'm crazy I am Ross Patterson. Good night, everyone. <laughs>